And finally, we have arrived at 4.4, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, which is going to be fantastic because it's the easiest way, of course, to integrate. So our objectives, we want to evaluate a definite integral using the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, FTC, you'll often see it written. Use the mean value theorem for integrals, find the average value over a closed interval, and then the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Not quite as exciting as the first. So again, we have two major theorems to discuss in this section, 4.4, and the first major idea is the fundamental, fundamental theorem of calculus. And again, we've been talking about it for a while, how we have a connection between the calculation of area and the antiderivative. But we haven't really necessarily put those together yet. Um, this one really puts it together well. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if I'm integrating from A to B, that all I have to do is find the antiderivative, which remember we called F, capital F, and I'm going to then evaluate that function of the antiderivative at B and also at A and I'm going to subtract those, and that's going to give me my answer. So let's take a look. If I have the function f of x equals 2x minus 3, and I'm trying to find the area enclosed by 1 and 4. Now in the past, we would have had to find delta x and find c, I, c sub i and do the limit definition, or I would have to graph this from 1 to 4, wow, please don't graph like I do, that's ridiculous, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I would have to graph this function, 2x minus 3, and etc, etc, you get the idea. I'm not going to graph it because that's not how we're going to do things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the antiderivative. So let's think back to when we were practicing the antiderivative. We said, let's take one degree more than that. So remember we said x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 was the power rule. So adding 1 to 1 gives me 2, and then I had to divide it by 2, which gave me x squared. And then this, remember, was x to the 0, so now it's x to the 1, divide that by 1, which didn't really matter, and then always a plus c. So here's my antiderivative, f of x big F of x equals x squared minus 3x plus c. So that's the antiderivative. To find the area, we can do this by integrating from 1 to 4, which are my limits here, of this function. So essentially they're saying, let's take this guy and plug in 4 and 1. So I want you to notice the little bit of different notation that I'm showing. So this one we're used to, finding the integral. This is saying, okay, I've already integrated because I've found the antiderivative, and now I want you to plug in both 4 and 1. So I'm going to take f of 4, which means plug 4 in here, and f of 1 means plug 1 in here. So 16 minus 12 plus c minus 1 minus 3 plus c, and really, do I care about the c's? Not so much. So really, I have 16 minus 12, which is 4, and 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, and I subtract them to get 6. So my answer is 6. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus. It is fantastic because I was able to integrate that so much more quickly than by using the limit definition or by finding some geometric figure that matched it. So let's take a look at the graph to see if it supports our answer. So here's my function. And from 1 to 4, we had a little region down here, and that region can be found by a1, so I called this guy a1, which was 1 half times the base, which is 1 half, times the height, which was 1, negative 1, I guess, really. And that gave me a negative area of 0.25, and again, it's negative because it's the area below the x-axis. And then this guy was a2, and I found 1 half times the base, which was 2.5, times the height here, which was 5, and I found 6.25. And when I add those together, I do in fact get 6, 
and notice that's what I got when I used my other method. So again, this slide is just a good reference page to talk about everything we just talked about, which is if I want to integrate a function from A to B, find the antiderivative of that function and evaluate it from A to B, so notice the notation, which means take f of B minus f of A. So then I've given you a great, so this is really just something to understand, remember, etc. So for instance, if I wanted to evaluate the integral from 1 to 3 of x cubed dx, then I'm going to use that power rule. Remember the power rule says if I have x to the third and I want to integrate it, then I want to take, uh, sorry, the integral of x to the third is x to the 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. So x to the fourth over 4, which is what I came up with here. So I'm just using that power rule. From there, now I am going to evaluate it from 1 to 3, which means I start with 3 and plug it back into that function, 3 to the fourth over 4, and then I subtract 1 to the fourth over 4, which gives me 20. So remember, I don't have to include the constant of integration because when I showed you on that last example, I had a plus C and a plus C and those plus C's really just cancel out, so it really doesn't matter. So I want to take a look at a full question with you and if you're following along on the slides, I've broken this one into two slides um, on my notes just so that I can show you the calculator part live instead of just a static picture of what I did in the calculator. So what I'm going to do here is I'm looking for the area bound by the curve y equals 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2 from 2 to 8, so that's my limits of integration, and of course the x-axis, meaning I want it to be bound into the positive region, quadrant 1. So the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that I'm going to integrate from 2 to 8, so those are my limits of integration, of this function dx. So d of x, dx meaning we're integrating with respect to x. So I went straight to, hey, here's my antiderivative, but let's make sure we understand how I got that. Remember, I took this one more than that, so I made it a 4, and then I took this divided by 4. And so that's where this first term came from. And then I took this to be 3 and then divided by 3, and then I took this to be x to the first divided by 1, and that was my antiderivative. Remember, when I'm doing this with a definite integral like this, I don't need to include the plus c, but it's not wrong if you do. Once I've done the antiderivative, that's when I write my function a little bit differently, because I've already done the integral, really, because I found the antiderivative, but now I'm evaluating from 2 to 8. So I'm basically taking 8, plugging that in to each one, and that's this first section, and then subtracting the whole quantity of taking 2 into each of these, into all of the x's. So I'm not d distributing a 2, like multiplying by 2, I'm replacing x with 2 and evaluating. So all of this turns into 1893 and a third, all of this turns into 9 and a third, and when I subtract those, I get 1884. That's my final solution. Now, of course, since I said you're going to have to have a calculator for this class, I want to show you how to use that calculator to also verify that this is 1884. Keep in mind, it's not going to stop you from having to show all of the work that I've asked you to show here, so don't think I'm trying to get you out of work. I'm just trying to give you a way to verify that you know what you're doing. Theorem. So again, oh, I want you to show you how to do this on a calculator to verify your results and not to just cheat and find the answer, because I am going to make you show work, of course. What I'm going to start out doing is go to math and 9. So math is right here, and then 9, I can either arrow down to it or just click 9. And notice this brings up a beautiful menu. Now I'm going to show you how to do it on my menu and then talk about the fact that your menu might not be quite as cool as mine. So if you have a menu like me, I'm going to plug in 2, I'm going to arrow up and plug in 8, so I'm going to make it basically look exactly like it's supposed to look according to my question. 
So 2x cubed, arrow over to get out of the cubed, minus x squared plus 2. Outside, I need to include that it's dx, which means I'm integrating with respect to x. So if you have a menu like Vine, you're going to plug it in exactly like that. When I press enter, notice I get 1884, which is what I found by hand. Now, if you have a TI-83, or maybe if it's not a plus, I can't remember exactly what the restrictions are, you would still go to Math 9, but it wouldn't bring up the pretty menu. You would just have to remember the order in which the in which to plug in your values. So you would put the function, which is 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2, comma, and then x, which is the uh, variable of integration, which is x, and then the lower limit, which is 2, comma, the upper limit, which is 8. It's going to give you the exact same thing, it's just not quite as snazzy because you have to actually remember the order in which to do it. Keep in mind that while I can integrate always with my calculator the way I've shown you and it will give you the right answer, you need to be smarter than your calculator to do this by hand. So if we think about the function, uh, the absolute value of x, it's going to look like that, but it's actually going to come together in the middle. So this is the absolute value of x. We should be familiar with that function. So if I'm looking at the absolute value of x minus 1, it's the exact same function, but moved over. And so the reason that I bring this up, and it should be the same width, I just suck at drawing, that's why I don't teach art. Don't ever take an art class from me. This is at 1, and so this is the function, the absolute value of x minus 1. Now the reason I bring that up is because I want to integrate from 0 to 2. And I know that from 0 to 1, my function is actually has a negative slope. So notice what I've done is I've rewritten the absolute value of x minus 1 into a piecewise function that says if my value is less than 1, then I'm going to use the negative value of x minus 1. So x minus 1, but it's a negative slope, so I just stuck a negative in front of it. If it goes from 1 on forever, but really I only care about it for two. It's a positive slope, so notice there is an implied positive out front, starting at one and going on to infinity. Now the reason that I do that is because when I rewrite this integral, I'm going to separate it into two parts. I'm going to integrate from zero to one using the negative and from one to two using the positive. When I integrate x minus 1, I get the same thing each time, which is 1 half x squared minus x, and notice that's the same on each one. Here, I just stuck the negative in front of it. Again, this guy goes from 0 to 1, this guy goes from 1 to 2, so I'm still covering the same distance. Then I'm just plugging it in, so I'm plugging in 1 into both, then I'm plugging 0 into both, and I'm subtracting those two values to get 1 half. Then I'm doing the same thing here, plugging 2 into both, plugging 1 into both, and subtracting those values to get 1 half. My final answer is 1, which means if I took this area, and I took this area, and I added it together, I should get 1. So here are three definite integrals for you to try. I want you to first do them by hand because you need the practice. Then you can certainly use your calculator to check your answer. So my first guy, I've got x cubed minus 4x. I found the antiderivative of that function to be x to the fourth over 4 minus 4 times x squared over 2, which of course I could have reduced this 4 over 2 to just be 2 times x squared, um, which is what I did here. Then I'm plugging in 2, and I'm plugging in 1, and I'm subtracting those two quantities to get negative 2.25. Again, feel free to check with your calculator. Integrating sine, remember I'm trying to find the antiderivative of sine, so not the derivative of sine, which is cosine, but the antiderivative, which is negative cosine. So negative cosine from 0 to pi, so cosine, negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of 0 gets me 1 minus negative 1, which is 2. And last one, if I take uh, 3, 
uh, square root of x. And remember, I can always take that 3 to the outside or leave it inside. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, x to the 1 half, remember, would be x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves to find the antiderivative, which is what this whole mess is about. And that reduces to 2x to the 3 halves from 1 to 4. So plug in 4, plug in 1, subtract the values, and get 14. Last one for you to practice. I'm using the fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area bounded by y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 2, the x-axis, and the lines 2 and 4, x equals 2, x equals 4. Press pause, try this question in its entirety. Feel free to also check it with your calculator, then press play to see how you did. So again, I'm integrating from 2 to 4, and that's given to me here, 2, 4. I'm finding the antiderivative of 3x squared minus 2x plus 2 using the power rule x cubed minus x squared plus 2x. I'm going from 4, or from 2 to 4, but I start by plugging in 4, the upper limit. So plug in 4, subtract the whole quantity. So don't forget that I've got two separate quantities. I'm subtracting the quantities. So it's best to go ahead and write it all in a parenthesis there. That gives me 56, which is this, minus 8, which is this, which gives me 48 square units because I'm talking about area.